When the Prime Minister called a snap summer general election, it looked like the Conservatives had a mountain to climb to remain in power. A fortnight on, polls, polls are continuing to put Labour on course for a landslide Westminster victory. But the big vote is still four weeks away and Tories say the public can be won over. Here in Scotland, we have our own distinctive contest with 57 seats up for grabs. Well, to assess the UK and Scottish battles, who better to have with us than the preeminent political commentator Bernard Ponsonby, who headed up STV's coverage of countless, <laughs> countless general elections. It's good to have you back. You can't stay away Bernard can you? Absolutely. Now you're no longer covering uh, politics on a day-to-day -day basis but are you enjoying the campaign? Well if you're a political junkie a general election is your World Cup and one of the great things that I can do is that I can channel hop and it gives you a great perspective a perspective that you don't get if you're in the field because you're chained to one particular mm -hmm. event but you know if you're not a political junkie and you're already bored with it, don't worry, the Euros are just around the corner <laughs> and this entire campaign will go into the deep freeze for a couple of weeks. Well, let's start with the UK um, picture first of all. And last night, of course, we had Rishi Sunak going head to head with Keir Starmer. And the biggest talking point from that was the Tory claim that voters will be £2,000 worse off under Labour. Let's have a little a listen of that. The contrast is clear at this election because Keir Starmer will reverse all of the changes I've made. That's going to cost everyone and you thousands of pounds. Oh. This £2,000 he keeps saying it's going to cost is absolute garbage. We won't go into the details of it. There are £2,000 worth of tax rises coming for every working family in this country. And as I said, he's saying to me he's going to raise well, taxes. I do, I do need to that's answer that. That's not the start I and that's not the end. Okay. That. I do need to answer that because he put that briefly, figure out there. Well, what's happened here is uh, it's a classic. They put in uh, pretend Labour policies to the Treasury and then they get a, a false readout. Well, both parties are, are sticking to their stories today. What were he making of it? I thought the astonishing thing was that the Prime Minister, time and again last night, put this two thousand pound figure out there and as the debate went on i simply asked myself when is starmer going to rebut that and he eventually got round to rebutting it and then i looked at my watch and it was 27 minutes past nine 27 minutes in before starmer actually got his line out now what always happens in these debates is that you have a headline the headline was the £2,000. The day two, in terms of the debate, is unpicking mm -hmm. what was actually said the night before. And, of course, the £2,000 figure, in a sense, has come back to haunt the Prime Minister because he was in part relying on the work done by the Treasury. The Treasury saying today, well, wait a minute, uh, we're very, very, very careful. We don't mm -hmm. uh, engage in what goes on in terms of the political crossfire in an election. Starmer saying he has got this figure by putting in things which are not Labour policy and therefore it's a lie. And because it's a lie, it goes to the Prime Minister's honesty. The Prime Minister is saying we stick by the figure. And of course the Tories are battling on a lot of fronts, aren't they? And amongst them um, is a, a renewed threat from uh, reform because Nigel Farage is now leading them, he's going to be standing as well. And a, a new YouGov poll out tonight is putting Labour at 40%, Tories on 19% and reform on 17%. Not the good news. electoral yes. stars are aligning for Sir Keir Starmer. The Labour vote is well up since the 2019 position and there's a nightmare scenario for the Conservatives south of the border where they face a potential squeeze from the political right and from the centre-left. If reform are nowhere near that poll tonight but take 10%, 11% of the vote, these are all Conservative votes. Reform eating into the Conservative votes probably on its own gets Labour across the line that's even without Conservatives switching to Labour. But in key seats south of the border, they are also under pressure from the Liberal Democrats. So you have this situation where support for the Conservatives is down. They're being squeezed from the political right by reform and from a bit of the left by the Liberal Democrats. Yeah. It's a nightmare situation. Yeah, the they Prime are Minister. under a lot of pressure, aren't they? But in Scotland, we've got a very different picture. It's almost an election within an election. And on Monday night, we had the Scottish leaders' debate. Uh, let's have a wee flavour of that. 
What about education? You were the Deputy First Minister and Education Secretary that saw Scotland's education standards mm -hmm. plummet down international rankings. And, and what about Michael Matheson? Why are you still defending a liar? The Institute for Fiscal <coughs> Studies say that there's an £18 billion black hole in the public finances which a Labour government has got to fill. And all those different tax changes you've set out are tax changes that you've already allocated the money to spend on different priorities. So where are the spending cuts going to come? Because you're going to prolong so austerity not at that's, all. that's undermined our public services in Scotland. Not at all, John. And you are the architect of austerity in Scotland, particularly around local government. We have already committed more money to our public services. I've already set out how we would do more capital investment. We would borrow to do capital investment as but well. But you're not going to make the case for rejoining the European Union. Why is there that? There will be an election in the future where our membership of the EU is on the ballot and the Lib Dems will be in the vanguard of that. But because of what's happened with the Conservative Party in terms of their damaging, reckless behaviour around the trusted relationships we had with Europe, then that is far, far removed. But we're dedicated to building a pathway back to the heart of Europe. And you were particularly interested in that exchange between Sarmar and Swinney about public spending. Yes, indeed, because the Institute for Fiscal Studies have actually pointed out that we've had two tax cuts in terms of national insurance, but the current UK government didn't fund them. Instead, what they did was that they said they would fund them as a result of deep cuts in public expenditure, which would come after the election. So it then raises the question, if Rachel Reeves is the Chancellor, what is she going to cut? That was the point mm -hmm. that John Swinney was making. But what John Swinney, in a sense, uh, didn't raise, and this is why this is a very, very interesting question, if Labour have to make cuts, and I suspect that they will, depending on where they cut, that will have a consequence for the Scottish bloc. That will have a consequence for the amount of money that Mr Swinney has to spend. So we've got a situation where Labour could come in, want to do great things. There is no fiscal headroom to do terribly much. Mm -hmm. They have to cut public expenditure. There might be a knock-on effect for Scotland. And that has implications for mm -hmm. John Swinney, because between now and the Holyrood election, he has to try and do something to improve public services. And he's not going to have any extra money either. Good grief. So um, at this election, most of the Scottish constituencies have been redrawn, haven't they? And there's a net loss of two seats. Now, here's what the result of the 2019 election in Scotland would have been if it had been fought under these new boundaries. Three parties would have had the same number of seats, but the Lib Dems would have had two fewer seats. And the polls are now predicting, of course, that mm. there's going to be a lot more red on this map mm. um, after uh, July the 4th. That says notional Scottish seats. What do we mean by notional? What has happened there? is that sophologists have looked at the 2019 general election and they've put the patterns of support for the old seats into the new seats, added some data, and they've said that if the voting patterns are the same at the general election as they were in 2019 on these new boundaries, there's the result that you will get. Now, you can see at Lib Dem minus two, that's because boundary changes to North East Fife uh, would make it not a Liberal Democrat seat, mm -hmm. but an SNP seat. And in Caithness, uh, on the new boundaries, it would also go SNP. But that's based on levels of support at the 2019 general election. The polls suggest that that is radically different. And if we were to factor in the most recent polls, what we're going to see from that is that there are far fewer SNP members and many more Labour members. There is effectively two elections going on in Scotland, a whole swathe of constituencies in the central belt between Labour and the SNP, and fascinating electoral battlegrounds in the north and the northeast and the borders between the SNP and the Conservatives. Uh, now, the, it feels that the Constitution is not dominating this election campaign in the, in the way it has in the past. No, I think that's right. I would say that this is the first election since the independence referendum, which has not been fought through the prism of one of two constitutional questions. In 2019, Boris Johnson tried to turn the general election into a de facto poll in getting Brexit done. Post-2014, the SNP have been saying, vote for us in order that we can get a second independence referendum. There has been a marked lack of any constitutional debate 
in this referendum, it feels like, if I can put it this way, an old-fashioned general election, and that's good for Labour, because every time there has been an election in Scotland, seen through the prism of one or two constitutional questions, mm -hmm. Labour have been the party that really has been the main casualty. Uh, the Tories want to talk about it, though. I mean, Douglas Ross was talking about it a lot on Monday night, well, wasn't On Monday it? night, what was really interesting is that every single soundbite that came from Douglas Ross was actually pinned to the electoral concerns of those six seats, uh, which we've just seen in that graphic. The Scottish Conservatives are running a core vote strategy because if they could get out this election still having six seats, when south of the border there has been a collapse in Conservative support, they can at least say, well, at least we held what we had. But I'll give you a prediction, there is no chance that the Conservatives will get 25% of the popular vote this time. I would expect the vote in central belt constituencies to substantially collapse and that will benefit Labour.